Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 1994's Clerks. Before we get started, if you want to follow me or Corey on Twitter, you can follow me at Junior D's. You can follow Corey at Corey underscore Idol. Dope. Let's get into the cast of Clerks. 1994, this film stars. Brian O'Halloran as Dante Hicks, Jeff Anderson as Randall Graves, Marilyn Gilliatti as Veronica, Lisa Spoonauer as Caitlin Bree, Jason Mewes as Jay, and Kevin Smith as Silent Bob. Yeah, I can understand if people were confused thinking, oh, that's Corey and Pat Armando. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was really Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith. That was not yes. us. It was literally, I, I, I realized that Kevin Smith was basically me from about a year ago with, oh, <laughs> with a long haired wig on. <laughs> if you, if, if you had an, the ability to see Armando and I, when we first met, when we were about 21, 22, this was basically us. He was just smoking cigarettes in a trench coat and I'm just like, pussy! <laughs> So accurate. So accurate. It brought back so many good memories. <laughs> <laughs> Except Silent Bob, nobody ever called me Silent. No, I, was, only, I was loud, obnoxious Bob. Is what only I around me. And I, <laughs> like, that guy never talks. Like, no, the other guy doesn't shut the fuck up. Uh, this, this movie um, became like this... this underground kind of cult classic it, almost immediately like yeah i it, i don't remember a time where it was like it it took time to build up like some of these classics do yeah like the, this was like yo this is literally the best student film ever made <laughs> ever made <laughs> yes it was really cool at the time because it was it was shot in black and white mm -hmm. And, you know, nothing like this had been shot that way. Um, no. And it was literally just, I mean, you and I kind of know being a New York trash bag and an Arizona trash bag. <laughs> it was basically about New Jersey trash bags and we could kind of relate. <laughs> yeah. Just a really <laughs> shitty fucked up day in the, in the uh, day in the life of a trash bag. That's all it was. Yes. So this this movie opens with Dante. He's apparently sleeping in his closet. I don't know what the hell's going on at the opening. He's getting a call from his boss to come into work at the convenience store. Today's supposed to be his day off. And we know this because he won't shut the fuck up about it all goddamn day. Um, Which is funny still, because it was funny <laughs> then. And it's funny still because I remember being that age. And getting yes. called into work and flat out, I'm not supposed to fucking be here today. Every little thing that goes wrong, that's immediately what you fall back on. So and I this, totally get it. And this was one of the most, if not just the quotable line from this movie. Like for oh. the next 10 years, that's all I heard anybody say whenever we were at work. Um, but when I saw it for the first time, and even now, and I love, this is nothing against the actor. This is nothing against the writing or anything. But I kind of hated Dante about, I don't know, 10 minutes into this movie because he wouldn't. Oh. He's the biggest whiny bitch. And it's funny, but it made me want to choke him out. <laughs> yeah, like, here's the thing. Dante is... <laughs> All right, I'll frame it this way. Dante's the kind of guy that in about 20 to 30 years is going to slap Chris Rock at the Oscars. Keep my name out your fucking mouth! Dante then gets to the store. He finds the, the padlocks for the security shutters are jammed closed with gum. So he hangs a sheet in shoe polish that just says, I assure you, we're open. I love this too because... Kevin Smith, clearly, there's a kind of a rule in writing uh, called Chekhov's gun. 
which means if a gun shows up in act one, use the fucking gun. Yeah. Right. So the shoe polish thing literally runs the span. Of the, that is there. What smells like shoe polish? Yeah. That line in question is in this movie more, even more so than I'm not supposed to be here today. Something smells like shoe polish. That is the longest running joke. Yes. I have ever seen. No, it's movie. fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, so Dante's day is basically filled with dealing with moron customers and the dude causing a riot about the ills of smoking and turns out that he's like the chewing gum sales guy. Yeah. And I got to do this real quick. <laughs> Hi, literally everyone in the world. This is your Uncle Cor, I'm speaking. Quit comparing anyone for any reason to the fucking Nazis. <laughs> Unless you start a world war and kill six million Jewish people and gypsies and all kinds of shit, you're not, they're not that. Yeah. So just stop it. <laughs> this was, this, I, I will say, as far as the, the joke goes, like this was impactful because nobody was calling anybody Nazis back then. <laughs> no, no, like this was way before it was like you just saw like a crazy guy with some politician's face and a Hitler mustache. So Dante's girlfriend, Veronica, comes in. She sprays everybody with the fire extinguisher and she confronts the guy who recommended the chewing gum over the smoking. Everybody finds out that he's the chewing gum sales guy. She kicks everybody out. Dante and Veronica then hide behind the counter talking about relationships. Yes. And they also discuss how many people they've slept with. Then we mm -hmm. get to the argument of how many dicks Veronica has sucked in her Be lifetime. Before we get into the epic amount of dicks in Veronica's <laughs> mouth, do you want the don't do that or should I take this? I'll take, I'll take the don't do that. Hi, everybody. Anybody in a relationship, guy, girl, dog, cat, don't care. Don't ask, just don't ask how many people the other person has slept with, sucked off, gone down on, titty in a mouth. It, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And take it from at least one guy, probably two guys, that used to actually care about that kind of shit. Um, it always ends poorly. It always ends in this fight about how many dicks you had in your mouth and how many dudes you slept with and how many women I slept with. And no number is ever a good number, period. No. Uh, and specifically to the guys, if this conversation, you're never going to be happy and you are going to make your partner feel like Amy Brenneman makes Reese Witherspoon feel in fear. Yes. Yes. Okay. It, and it's just it's not necessary because here's here's the big picture. Okay. This is forest through the trees moment, all you fellas out there. Whatever your partner is doing to you that you really like, <laughs> which is mainly part of the reason why you're with them in a committed relationship, they learn that shit from somewhere. Yes. You don't have to throw a parade for the fellas. <laughs> <laughs> but you say a quiet little thank. Thank you. Every single you, night to them. You, you give them one of these. Hell yes. I, I will say this, though. Another quotable line. Yes. Um, it happens at this part in the film because they get into the argument and he doesn't have really a problem with the amount of people that she slept with. But then he finds out that she sucked 37 dicks and now it's an issue. On the way out, he says, hey, try not to suck any dick on the way to the parking lot. And I love my favorite line in this whole thing is when he says, tells the customer, my girlfriend sucked 37 dicks. And the guy says, in a row? My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks. In a row? Uh, so we then uh. get introduced to Randall Graves. Randall works at the RST video rental store right next door to the quick stop. And he doesn't really spend much time at work at the, uh, at the rental store. And no. he instead hangs out with Dante most of the day, bullshitting about Star Wars and shitty customers and their shitty lives just in general. But Randall seems pretty content on how, how shit's going in his life. 
And all he does is he serves as like this weird, I don't know, because he's not a punching bag, but he just, he's like a, he's like a shitty dream catcher for Dante. He just receives all of his fucking bullshit this whole movie. Yeah, like, so if you have a friend like Dante, you have to be a nihilist like Randall to yes. put up with that bullshit. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. it just bounces right off of him. And a lot of the time, he's able to take a lot of his uh, uh, evil sadomasochistic uh, <laughs> uh, tendencies and push them onto Dante and torture this fucking guy yeah. with these weird fucking philosophical riddles that Really, it's just kind of like a, you sound like a 22-year-old kid just talking bullshit that has yeah. never done anything in their life. But we also find out here that Dante's ex-girlfriend, Caitlin, who he hasn't gotten over since high school, is engaged to be married. So he, he goes through the paper. He reads that she's engaged to be married. He's calling the, the newspaper to see if it's a misprint. And, and another <clears throat> thing, I don't know if you want to do a PSA oh, here. Oh, I most certainly do. After Hi. you, sir. <laughs> Hi, ex-lovers. Uncle Corey here. The grass is never greener. Nope. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. The end. Yeah. Especially when a bitch cheated on you eight motherfucking times. <laughs> yes. That's that, insane. But, by the way, like, I, I understand, like, um, especially at their age. And, you know, we were obviously at that age at one point. Yeah. You go to college or different areas, so you kind of grow apart. You're having different experience. If that happens, cool. You guys can kind of meet up later on in life, and, and that might be cool. Sure. But when all the other person is doing is cheating on you incessantly, um, that type of behavior doesn't change. No. It just, especially with you. <laughs> so, no. like... No, if somebody's again, cheating on you. This is, this is how you end up slapping Chris Rock at the motherfucking Oscars. <laughs> Keep my name out your fucking mouth. Do not waste your time with nope. these people that don't give a fuck about you. It's yep. such a waste of your time and energy. You're right. It's fact. So we get there. There's actually there's the the next scene comes up and it's Randall ordering movies from the distributor. This is such a great, funny scene. More funny to me because I worked at a movie rental place mm -hmm. and they had like the little secret porn room that yeah. I had to stock. And him on the phone going over the movies that they want to order. Pink pussy lips. Oh yeah, and uh, all holes filled with hard cock. Yep. Was like had me on the floor now when I watched it this time because yeah. of that experience. Because I'm putting away, you know, Come Guzzlers 4. Like they made three of the others of these movies. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, 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 I don't think they needed the fourth one. <laughs> like, no wonder I turned it off after 30 seconds. I couldn't follow the plot. The lady asking for the uh, for like the kids movie. This whole interaction is great, which. And in this movie, and I know it's like, oh, it's all about New, New Jersey trash bags. It is. But these interactions, especially early on, when you're having these jobs that really, in the grand scheme of things, don't fucking matter. The movie oh, rental yeah. place, the convenience store, the, just the stories. You know who doesn't have stories? Or they do. They're just really boring. People with careers. <laughs> exactly. career, career stories suck ass and they're not funny. At all. They're typically mostly sad. <laughs> yeah. They, I, 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 these jobs that you don't give a fuck about, the stories that you tell later on in life, they're all hilarious. Oh, yeah. Most most of my career stories revolve around me farting into a chair while trying to think up some bullshit to write down. <laughs> the other interaction that I really loved was Randall's interaction with the customer asking if the two movies... Yes. Uh, are are any good and if one's better than the other that whole interaction is fantastic and then the the classic line from Randall I don't think your manager would appreciate it I don't appreciate it. your ruse ma'am I beg your pardon Your ruse your cunning attempt to trick me 
the interactions are so like dog shit. And you're typically talking to people who at the end of the day, don't give a fuck anyway. No, they're paying <laughs> half attention to whatever they got. If they even watch it, half the yeah. shit I rented, I never watched. Exactly. Dude, I got 87 streaming services on my television. <laughs> I've been watching reruns of Bar Rescue for the last two years. Dude, the settle fuck down. out of here. Settle down. I pay for a bunch of streaming <laughs> services, but I went to the Roku channel free service and been watching fucking Top Shot. Who does that? A show that came out, what, 15 years ago? <laughs> and if you're laughing at us at home, realize you're watching us for entertainment. So what does that say about you? Veronica then stops in again. She brings Dante lasagna for lunch. They make up over their fight about sexual partners and whatnot. They talk about Dante's current attitude and how shitty it is <laughs> and that he's in a rut and he literally has zero motivation to change anything. And by the way, when your girlfriend, and I'm not doing a PSA or anything here, but when your girlfriend chases off an angry mob, then comes back after you've slut shamed her, and brings yep. you leftover lasagna and accepts your like just kind of like, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't like that you like dick, but I'm sorry. <laughs> and she accepts that bullshit apology. Yeah. Like, dude, what are you doing even thinking about somebody else? You were right. Dante then after this learns that his boss isn't coming in at noon like he had promised. And Dante is stuck at the store all day and he's not going to be able to go play his roller hockey game. So he decides to close the store and host the hockey game on the roof of the convenience store. Awesome. Which is fantastic. This, this whole scene is great because a pissed off customer gets onto the roof. He knocks Dante over and he shoots their only ball off the roof like three miles down the fucking road. Awesome. And at the same time, like, dude, you're not making it off that roof walking. No. No, like not at all. We're going to see if you can fly. You were correct. Well, and I love the fact here that Dante's like, you know, when you when you meet somebody like Dante in your life, you're like, oh, this dude's angry. Like, I wouldn't want to cross him because he's just pissed about life and he's going to take out his aggression on somebody. <laughs> Dante gets fucked up by a dude who's kind of upset that he can't get his fucking newspaper and a coffee. So after he reopens the store, Dante finds out uh, one of his ex-girlfriends has died and her memorial or her funeral is that day. Randall then talks him into closing the store again and going to the wake. Yeah, which now, he, he's like insisting on doing. Randall doesn't even really talk him into it. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, I have to go. Yeah. Well, no, you don't. Can we can we do this? I'll do another. Don't do that. Hi, ex exes, I guess. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a friend or an ex, or whatever. Somebody you've lost touch with. I don't know. Over the past six, seven, eight years. If they weren't important enough for you to, I don't know, just randomly give them a call, go hang out, have coffee together or have a drink or whatever. Not important important enough to you to actually go to their funeral. There's li literally no reason to go. None. Apparently, while at this funeral, Randall knocks over the casket and they're chased out and they go back to the store. So Dante then talks to some customers who happen to be former high school classmates, and he finds out that the guy he's talking to, Rick Darris was one of the dudes that Caitlin cheated on him with. Did you recognize that name, by the way, for all you Kevin Smith fans out there? He was, uh, his name was also brought up in uh, Chasing Amy. Oh, yeah. I'm I pretty sure he that. was part of the finger cuffs situation. <laughs> so. Well, apparently he was finger cuffing Caitlin, too. Rick Darris uh, is slamming ass all over <laughs> Jersey. Is <laughs> yeah. basically... All I know is that a guy named Rick Darris obviously hurt Kevin Smith's feelings really bad at one point in his life. <laughs> yeah, my guess is he fucked his girlfriend and called him fat. So another man enters the store and gives Dante a court summons for allegedly selling cigarettes to a four-year-old, which Randall is the one that sold the cigarettes yes. to the four-year-old. So 
now Dante faces some charges and a $500 fine and the dude like bolts out of the store. Which, by the way, if somebody walks in and is just like, yeah, this mom called me and said you owe me 500 bucks, you tell that person to go and fuck themselves because yes. you don't. Oh, yeah. by the way, you can't fight it in court either. Oh, okay, dickhead. Oh, oh yeah? Here's it's- your fucking money. <laughs> That was that was my first reaction to that. I was like, dude, somebody comes in and tells me, like, here's a here's a napkin. You owe you owe the government five hundred dollars because you sold sick. Get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? Right. So Caitlin then suddenly appears in the in the store on a surprise visit. Dante takes her to the video store because, you know, nobody works there for a private conversation. So she tells Dante that she's breaking it off with her fiance and Dante then asks her out and they discuss like starting to date again. And we did a don't do that already with the situation. So we're good. Dante then goes home to change and has Randall watch the store for him again. And he gets back and Caitlin is impressed that Dante snuck into the dark bathroom to have sex with her. Only it wasn't him. She apparently had sex with a dude that died jerking off in the bathroom from earlier, who, by the way, well, let's stop for a brief minute here. Um, I've never worked at a convenience store. Um, I don't know if this is a a common occurrence, if this is a freak thing. Um, If a person comes in to take a shit, do they oftentimes go to the clerk at the front of the store and go, hey, can I have a porn mag while I take a shit? Like, is that a normal thing? Hell yes. I personally have never been the kind of person that, you know, reads a porno mag while they're taking a shit. Typically that is reserved for one thing, or it was back in, you know, 1990s when we were fucking jerking off like pilgrims. When all, but, when all you had was the AOL dial-up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> was it worth your time? No. Um, so, yeah, I just I didn't understand that. But here's where my capitalist brain kicked in was I was like, you want toilet paper? That's cool. We sell different toilet paper. You want a porno mag? That's cool. We sell magazines. You asked to use my shitter. That for free. You can yeah. have this shit going to cost you some money, cousin. The fuck he just, just keep coming back asking me for shit. He just yeah, he gives them the shit. Yeah, he's like, OK. <laughs> Fuck that. Pay me. Yeah. Then you can do then you jerk off into your magazine and wipe your ass with it. Do whatever you want. I don't care. And here's another quick don't do that. I don't need music. I don't need don't grab a porn mag and go into a just don't shit in a convenience store. What the fuck is your problem? Okay? Go to a hotel, FYI. They have clean they clean them like 17 times a day in there. Don't I, don't go to a convenience store where somebody probably just got murdered, especially in Jersey. Yeah, that's disgusting. That bathroom is not great. Yes. Um, can I ask you a question? Why do they sell sure. porno mags at the airport? Um, I don't know, but didn't a dude just get uh, banned for life for jerking off four times on a like a JetBlue airline or something? Yeah, he exceeded <laughs> it. He exceeded the limit. An ambulance then comes. The cops come. They kind of do their little investigation and the ambulance takes Caitlin away, like in shock, along with the corpse in the same ambulance. Yeah, Caitlin ain't coming back from this one. No, no, she's she's uh, that's that's a lot of th- that's years of therapy. Meanwhile, Jay and Silent Bob, they come into the store. They know about Dante's situation. And then Jay and Silent Bob give Dante advice. I like both of their characters because they kind of stayed out of the fray. Yeah, there's a lot of other shit. Their, they're <laughs> just other. selling fucking weed and fucking punch dancing and smoking singing, cigarettes. Singing Berserker or having her buddy sing Berserker. You gotta hear him sing Olaf Berserker. Would you like some making fuck Berserker? <laughs> Dante then decides that he's in love with Veronica, but... Randall, trying to help out Dante, tells Veronica about Caitlin, and she loses her shit on Dante, breaks up with him. Which leads me into my next point, which is don't 
butt your nose into other people's shit. Just let Dante do his thing. I know you're trying to do him a solid because he's got to tell Veronica that he wants to date, and there's, that, that's a whole thing. But like, as his buddy, I'm like, bro, you just got to do that. You just got to call her in here and go over to her house, and you need to tell her. I, I ain't saying shit. I'm keeping oh, that to myself. Totally agree with that. However, I am a big fan for the sake of Veronica that he did it. 100%. Because he would have never done it. Exactly. He would have just went along like it never happened and been like, oh my God, did you hear your ex-girlfriend fucked a guy in the bathroom, like a dead guy in your bathroom? And I know it was a crazy night. I felt so bad for her. I'm going to go see her. Like, oh, you're such a great guy, Dante. Her life would have been just fucking miserable. Yep. Knocked up, and then it would have popped out. Like, oh, yeah, remember that fucking time? Mm-mm. <laughs> exactly. For, for her sake, this was awesome. And I yep. love that Randall did this, even if it was to help him to just cause chaos. Yeah. Whatever it was, it gave Veronica her self-respect back. And I appreciated that because that Absolutely. lady was going to have none when she found out 20 years from then. Yep. Dante then loses it on Randall and they fight throughout the store. Shit's flying everywhere. Afterward, Dante pisses and moans more about how awful his life is. And Randall finally lets him have it here. Yes. And he tells Dante that he's sick of hearing him whine about how shitty his life is and that Dante needs to think about making some serious fucking changes Mm -hmm. in his life. If he wants it to improve when a character like Randall is telling you that you need to make some serious changes in your life. If you want it to improve you, you're fucked. (laughs) Yeah. That, that, that's a, that's a hell of a sign that you need to get off your ass and start making some changes. It's a great one eighty. Like, Oh, Basically, dude, throughout this movie, done. Randall's the one fucking off. Like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Who gives a shit? Why do you care about these customers? You're never going to fucking see. All they want is their goddamn coffee. Fuck these people. The whole movie. And then at the end of it, he's just like, dude, you're a fucking shit show. What's your pr- like? It, you want to change? Change. I'm happy yeah. with. I'm happy with just fucking off at the goddamn video store. And, and the best line he gives here, which is a great piece of advice for everyone out there, especially you social media freaks and warriors, <laughs> the weight of the world, it's not on your shoulders. Yep. I'm not saying you can't care about shit. I'm just saying you don't have to care about all the shit. <laughs> all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Like, and this film ends with... Them two cleaning up the store for the night. They reconcile. And Randall leaves the store, but pops back in to toss Dante's sign back at him, saying, hey, you're closed. I'm glad that this is the end of the movie, as opposed to the alternate cut. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Dante gets shot at the end. Spoiler alert! (laughs) But yeah, um, I just... I've seen that cut and I just didn't like it. It almost yeah. lended it almost lent more credence to Dante's version of events. Like really the weight of the world is on my shoulders and I yeah. was the victim this whole time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it just kind of feeds into whatever he thinks is going on. Yeah. Um plus the movie I mean fuck, why did it have to be so dark? Like if you're yeah. gonna, like you fucking shot him? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like just the way it ended is perfect. Yeah. It ended on a light note. That's what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Because you're 22 and at the end of the day, who gives a fuck? It's a menial I, job. If you have one yeah. menial job, you can get another one. And by the way, in Clerks 2, that's exactly what the fuck they do. So, yeah. Well, and and the funny thing, like, it, believe me, I, I love a good dark ending, especially in a comedy. Mm-hmm. And for Kevin Smith and seeing Kevin Smith's work since then. Mm-hmm. that alternate ending makes complete sense to me. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, here's a super dark curveball at the end of this, like fucked up funny movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so it makes sense. I didn't, 
I didn't not like it, but I just liked this the the regular ending better. I like I just yeah, I'm with you. I like the regular so, ending much better. I thought the it was just like Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah. I guess we're leaving now. Thanks for the comedy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um as far as this movie though goes to me, does it hold up? Hold up? No, it is very nineties. Oh, a hundred percent. But it is, it is a brilliant look in the nineties. Um, yep. I think the movie is still fantastic mm-hmm. and I think it can be what the situations are all relatable still today. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think you know, for- the language has changed. You don't talk quite as fucking fast. I don't think anybody's fucking dead guys quite as often as we were in the 90s now that that seemed to be a, a, an epidemic in the 90s yeah that we really got off on like dead guy comedies <laughs> but um yeah you know by and large i love this movie i love kevin smith i me too i think everything he's done whether it's you know the uh uh these kind of Jay and Silent Bob span of movies, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy, etc., yeah. I think are all fantastic. I think some of his more serious work, like Red State, is a fucking great Red, movie. Red State is brilliant. I yes. I saw that movie. I didn't I saw it and I think right before I I saw it, somebody told me that it was a Kevin Smith movie. And I didn't know. I just saw the the trailer. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Where's the dick jokes? Um, I I thought it was going to be like a dark kind of comedy. And it was just not. But it was brilliant all the way through. Um, But yeah, like even like Dogma. Dogma was was fantastic. Dogma is probably my favorite of the Jay and Silent Bob movies. Yes. Um, Um, But yeah, I will say this. Die Hard, Live Free or Die Hard. That's an underrated fucking diehard movie, man. Yes. And if if you ever see, uh, there was an interview he did about Bruce Willis. Yeah. And he, like what lenses he was using and that like that whole interaction. If you ever look it up on YouTube, I'm assuming it's there, um, is a great interview with him talking mm-hmm. about about that. So, uh, but yeah, this this movie's this movie's what kicked everything off. And it's. I still like this movie, man. Just for so, some cheap laughs, it's filmed well. Like he mm-hmm. showed he was a good director right out the fucking gate with this oh, thing. Oh, he knew how to tell a story because this is, again, one of those movies that's basically about nothing. It's just yeah. a day in this clerk's life. That's yeah. really it. Um, so, yeah, uh, he's fantastic storyteller. Everybody in this movie's great. Yeah. No beef with anything, of course. Jay and Silent Bob are fucking comedy gods. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but that's that's all I got. What uh, what other movies we got coming up? We got Toy Soldiers. It's going to be a good one. Remember Me, the R. Pat's classic. Uh, Secret of My Success and Beautiful Girls. Sounds like a good time, my friend. Uh, well, with that said, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1994's Clerks.